Yay! It's Paul Cocker Day. I'm excited. I will tell you that much as I love him, he's had the cooties. He's had the <laughs> flu. So, you know, and, and often I've been kind of a a little bit of a witch, Paul, about seeing people <laughs> because I'm like, if you've had any germs, don't get near me. How long have you been over the flu? <laughs> uh, today would be six days, so okay, I'm good. Okay, all right, yeah, so he's good, good. he's good. It I was wouldn't brutal. even I wouldn't even schedule guests because I said, have you been near a hospital lately? <laughs> have you been near the flu? I just would not schedule guests, but you got it probably from somebody you met with or somebody you saw, somebody you shook hands I with. Did. It is transmittable by those handshakes, Mm -hmm. those. So I have been kind of staying to myself. I went to visit one of my dear, dear friends who is sick as a dog and he was over here and I was over here and we were about <laughs> eight feet apart and we talked and I said, I love you and I miss you, but I'm leaving. Yes, <laughs> you I know? agree. So um, bless your heart. That I, was my first experience with the flu. I've never had it They said it's terrible. It they said this brutal. is a terrible strain of flu. So I'm glad you're here today. <laughs> I'm glad you are back on health. Back on health, Me because too. Uh, you are yeah you're you're the daddy to a whole big family that has anybody else gotten any? They've inkling? all had it. Holly's had it. Kel's had it. Katie's had it. Will's had it. And but I I I came through all of that without getting the flu. Wow. But I'll tell you, I never realized how painful it was. At one point, I was laying in the bed, kind of in and out of it. And the hardest part for me was was mentally, I just couldn't go to sleep, even though I hurt so bad. Yeah. So I finally started going to sleep on the second day of running that high fever and Holly came in that afternoon, she patted me on the chest and before I even realized, it felt like somebody took a stick and hit me as hard as they could right in the chest. I said, don't touch me again. And, uh, <laughs> So she goes, well then, okay. Well, well. I said, wait a minute, I'm sorry, no I'm sorry. No soup for you, big yeah. boy. <laughs> Sitting here to suffer by yourself. So uh, well, Holly's not, your not gifted in the nursing category. She's like, oh, you're sick. You know, here's yeah. the food. I'll yeah, throw it at you. That's me. I go to the door and look, and then shut the door and say, see you in four days. Yeah, you know, that's the way if it you was. survive, I'll see you in four days. But well, I'm glad you're here today. Me too. Um, I will tell you. You know. Everybody knew the side I was on with the election, and, and everybody knows that you're, what do you call yourself, political atheist? A political atheist, yeah. yeah. So, I'm not an atheist, let's no, make that clear. No, 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 but I'm going to be honest. Have you seen smiling people since the election? Oh, yes. I mean, I, I've seen positivity. a tremendous amount of, of positivity, really bordering on euphoria. Yeah. So That's me. I keep seeing yeah. these people who are going like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. And I'm like, what's wrong with them? Oh. Yeah, you know, and I mean, people are really getting into it. They're they're into it. They're excited. I mean, I've had people that uh, I have a gentleman that had had lived in a foreign country for a period of time where their currency had collapsed and just they had to flee the country. Uh huh. And uh, uh, we talked not too long ago, and his comment was, "Hey, I'm not I'm not as worried about that." He was terrified about the country to yeah. begin with. Now yeah. he says, "I'm not that that concerned." And it's fascinating to me because there's five, I, I'm talk I say one, but there's four or five that I work with that have ended up here from terrible situations in other countries. Right. And they were terrified mm -hmm. prior to the election, and they're oh, not yeah. quite so terrified now. Not yeah. that, you know, we've still got a lot of work to do. Sure it's going to take some time to get, <coughs> sure to get everything implemented, but it's it's nice to have the average individual. I'm I'm excited. The average individual focused on for the first time in quite some time. Let's listen to what I, I faced yesterday. I, I'm going to have a birthday next week, and it's a big one. It's an old one. And I got tickled because I, I counted up. Trump, Pence, eight years, then Pence, whoever, eight years. That's 16 years. <laughs> That's probably my life expectancy. <laughs> and I said, woo. <laughs> you know, yes. So I kind of got that euphoric feeling too. <laughs> but I really am, I'm seeing more jobs. Yes. I'm seeing more housing. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing new construction, which I love. I love when a piece of land has been sitting forever, and then all of a sudden you see the bulldozers, you see things going. And Nick is working over in Forsyth County and down in the Holly Springs area where subdivisions are going in you would not believe how yes. many they're building yes and it's like oh my goodness gracious mm -hmm. sakes alive so bordering Forsyth County and down in Cherokee County mm -hmm. those two areas you talk about popping now Betty they are popping they are they are popping and I don't know if you keep up with real estate or not but I do. And anything under $150,000 that is priced appropriately is selling immediately. Yes. It's not, you're going to put it on the market. If it's priced appropriately, you know, there will be some overpriced. And we've run into that lately because, and, and I, I can say this because I've been doing this a long time, I'm old. 
I know the value of housing. Yes. Even in these crazy times, I know the value of a house. And, and my buddy, Kathy Bruce, that I love and trust so much with appraisals, she and I can I can do the appraisal before I hire her to do the appraisal because right. i got to hire her anyway yeah. because the bank wants her to do it. <laughs> and we're dead on. We're mm -hmm. dead on. But, but I get tickled when people hear... It's a seller's market. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a seller's market, but that doesn't mean that you're going to get more for your house than it's worth. No, a seller's market means that, that you have the, a little bit of negotiating power advantage. You know, this would be a neutral seller's here. There are extremes, but from, what I've, heard, from, from what I've heard, we're not in that extreme. No, no, because we're balanced out, but we yes. are flowing very steadily. And I, mm -hmm. I get tickled because ball ground is like the place to be right now. Yes. Everybody wants to live in ball ground. Well, unless you want to move in with me, you, there's nowhere to live in ball ground. <laughs> there's and no new, there's no, no houses for there, sale. No, there. but I got tickled because three weeks ago a sign went up and immediately I go down there and I call about it. It's for sale by owner. It's overpriced. Do you know how I know it's overpriced? It's been on the market three weeks. Yes. And when I looked at it, I thought, mm -hmm, overpriced by about fourteen to nineteen thousand. Mm -hmm. Fourteen to nineteen thousand is too much. Mm -hmm. And so I keep watching it. And I called my friend who sold her home in Florida and wants to move kind of halfway up. I said, you really need to look at this house. And she said, well, it's more house than I need. I said, well, it's actually they're asking more than it's worth too. Yeah. So that's the only reason it's still on the market mm -hmm. in ball ground because anything in ball ground priced correctly gone just like that. Mm -hmm. Anything in Nelson priced correctly, gone just like that. It is amazing to me. Now, one of the things I don't do, and I used to do this, I used to sell, um, I, I just did a lot of stuff in Bent Tree years yes. and years ago, mm -hmm. and Kusawati. Mm -hmm. You know, those are places that there are still lots of houses available. There are. So if you want to live in a gated community, which is a good idea in today's times, there's still a lot of inventory in those two places. Yes. Less than there was, but there's still a lot of inventory. A lot of people don't want to pay the amenities. And that's still a buyer's market, too. Yeah, yeah. it is, definitely. So there's still some homes available if you want to move up here. But have you been keeping up with the burglaries and the crazy things happening in Jasper? I really have. As a matter of fact, I've got to return the phone call to the DA for three days. I've had a voicemail that we were actually caught up in that. I had a situation where <clears throat> our house wasn't broken into, but my son found somebody that was on our property never have i called the law on a trespasser uh -huh. but we did and come to find out it was a friend of mine's four-wheeler that was stolen uh -huh. and it took them about 90 days to catch them but but they called him i actually saw the guy and videoed him and that was one of the things that helped do it right but, but it's been horrific well this this is crazy because i used to never worry about living in a gated community but now it's kind of a it's a protective thing. I think people are moving to go to communities because all of a sudden we've had armed robberies in Jasper. We have mm -hmm. had break-ins in the middle of the night in Jasper. That's something that we're not used to. Yeah. We're just not used to. It takes us out of our comfort zone because now when I get out of the car after dark, I look both ways and I'm like, okay. But um, is it, you know, still the economic time hardships or the drugs or, you know, we don't know what's bringing this on. I think it's a little bit of both. You know, you get, you get, there's been some, been some, uh, you ever heard the thing? Have you ever tried a job? That's what kills me about burglars. You know, they can yeah. get a job. They get work job. so hard. Yeah. Well, it's like in our house, yeah. when the break in started taking place, one of the convenience stores close to my house was broken into and they cut the security line. So they uh -huh. never called the police. Uh -huh. Um, and then, so I picked, uh, so I called and I had mine set up on wireless and put it in a box so that even if they get in the house, they can't break it. And we put some uh, exterior video surveillance. Yeah. Because yeah. I, where I'm sitting, my neighbors <coughs> can't see my house. Mm -hmm. So, and then... I like nosy neighbors now. Yeah. I like neighbors who pay attention. I, I think too. I think we kind of need to watch out for each other. That's the community part. Yeah. Yep. Well, and, and of course, my daughter was terrified at first, but I said, honey, that, so every weekend for several weekends, we went outside, shot the shotgun. I said, look, you know, these are some of these break-ins are occurring with people at home. Yes. I said, yeah. so, you know, you're a 15-year-old girl, you're, you're a, 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 a cute girl. If you're at home by yourself and somebody breaks in that house, you punch the wow. immediate alarm code, you take that shotgun, sit in the back of the room. If they come in, shoot them. You know, shoot them. If shoot they em. come in the house yes. and they know you're there, they're yeah. there to do you harm. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, uh, and, and you know, that's interesting because yesterday we had this conversation about maybe I should get a gun. And, and everybody knows I'm, I, I've never owned a gun, but I've, I've deer hunted. 
and I've done a 20 gauge shotgun. Mm -hmm. So if you came in my house, you'd really get it with a 20 gauge shotgun. But um, it's something we're all thinking about now. We're thinking about safety and protecting ourselves, our family, and our loved ones. And it's, it is what it is. Well, I'll tell you two things. One, personally, uh, I carry on a regular basis, um, not 100% of the time, but there are three times in my life that, that I never actually had to draw on somebody, but, but I did reveal that I had a uh -huh, weapon, uh -huh. which stopped the circumstance. Uh -huh. But I was trained that you don't draw unless you're willing to use it. Right. And, um, but that's, that's unfortunate. Listen to uh, something else. So my son goes coyote hunting. Uh-huh. On our property at night, we've got an issue with some coyotes. And at 10, 15 at night, he texts me and says, Dad, there's a man uh, in the woods and has been here for 30 minutes and the guy got up. So we actually had a guy that was traveling through that was camping on the corner of some oh of gosh. our property. Wow. Yeah. And, That's uh, a little spooky too. Well, and the problem is with this break-in ring, we're, we're paying real close attention to that. You know, a lot of these are just, they're camping in old houses. They're, uh, uh, they're squatting in old houses. Oh, yeah. they're, they're camping on people's property, scouting out the properties yes. and then going and stealing things. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's terrible. I don't understand how they can't stop it. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, and squatters seem to have more rights than um, homeowners do because um, Dawn had to deal with something when she bought a property that had squatters in it and it took forever to get the squatters out, which that, I thought was really crazy. That doesn't make sense to me. That didn't make sense to me either, and it cost her several hundred dollars to go to court to do this, mm -hmm. to do this, and I'm like, seriously? Right. So. Well, in this crazy. circumstances, I wanted them charged. I, to I told the sheriff, I said, I want them charged with criminal trespassing. We've mm -hmm. got no trespassing signs. We've got all this stuff. Um, it was across from our house. They could very easily have taken, you know, binoculars, been sure. looking in the window, and they were charged with loitering. Oh and, did, my gosh. and they didn't even pick up the phone and call me and tell me. I had to find that out from somebody else. Wow. So that's bizarre when somebody's on yeah, your own yeah. property and you don't can't even get, even get me get started. <laughs> don't even get me started. Well, I gotta say something about something I love. I still love local newspapers. Yes, I do too. I love local newspapers. I love picking up and reading in print about your friends and your neighbors. And obviously my daughter Angela loved the same thing. Because in all of her belongings that I've been going through again for the last four weeks, I've just been going through, going through, cleaning out, sorting. This one I found, and it, it is just my kind of vengeance. <laughs> I got back Northwest Airlines. <laughs> I bought a first class ticket for my husband who was very, very sick at the time to fly to Alaska because he wanted to see his beloved Alaska one more time before he passed away. So I bought him a first class ticket and then we had other people traveling with him and everything was set to go and he ended up in Piedmont, Atlanta in emergency surgery. Oh no. So during emergency surgery, I'm dealing with Northwest Airlines who had no heart, no mercy, and no caring about squat. Absolutely not. And I'm in tears, and I'm saying, look, I have this first-class ticket. My husband is in emergency surgery. He is battling cancer. This is a bad day for us. Could you please refund our money or, you know, give me a credit, do something? No, we're sorry, we can't. Well, I came up with a brainstorm, and I'm smarter than most, I think, because not many people <laughs> at a tragic time would have thought of this. We had a child at home who had the same name as his dad. So I said, son, would you like to go to Alaska? Because you fixing to be your daddy. Yeah. <laughs> and loaded up, and Jennings Young took Nicholas and Steve, and they went to Alaska, and, they, and Chris Bryan, his, his grandson, went. They had a fantastic time, and this, in the progress, we found these pictures of all these beautiful big fish that they caught. Oh, that's and I great. said that was so funny because this was my way of woohoo Northwest Airlines. <laughs> it was an eleven $1 hundred dollar ticket, and they weren't going to give me a refund. And I said that is ridiculous. So that's eleven $1 hundred dollars worth of halibut they yes, caught there too. Oh yes, it was much more than that. <laughs> but but it's interesting because sometimes things are right, and people do it the way it should be done. Yes. And and I've got something I'm dealing with right now that is just not right. And I'm going to start making phone calls, writing letters, and trying to get something done for a, a beautiful young woman. And, and I just, I've been, I said, there's got to be a way to make the system work for the people. Yes. But it doesn't always work for the people. No. And it's like this situation, I laughed this morning when I found this because, honestly, if I hadn't been on top of my game, we would have lost $1,100. Because, obviously, right after that, my husband passed away. But I kept saying, what am I going to do with this $1,100 ticket? 
I can't use it. Nobody else can. And then I thought, bingo, we got a kid at home with the same name. Here you go, big boy. Load up and go to Alaska. And and that's crazy to have to do that. But sometimes you have to be a creative problem solver. Yes, yes. I was a uh oh. <laughs> that's the first that time I've actually ever that done that. That was the fire alarm. Sorry. No, that wasn't. <laughs> that was Paul's phone. <laughs> And I gotta tell y'all about this. Y'all, this is a selfie stick. Is that what you call it? Yeah. That actually scared me. Yeah. And this is funny because Victoria got me this for Christmas and I laughed and she said, Nanny, how do you like it? And I said, Well, sugar, when I figure out how to use it, I'll be happy to tell you. But today, thank you, Caleb. He he has actually got it working for me and showed me how to do it. And Paul and I will do some selfies before we get off the air. But I laughed because I said, I have to find a teenager to help me use this. Well, <laughs> Caleb's a little bit older than a teenager, but he helped me use it. So, yay. Um, Christmas good at your house? Yes, it was. Good. We, we had a chance to fellowship with the family. And Holly and I don't do much on the gift exchange side, which is good because... I got busy and didn't get her anything for Can Christmas. Can I share something with yes. you? Yes. Every year, every year, I, I tease Brackett about a certain gift I want <laughs> that I never get. And I, and I always tease him about it. And so it's a big deal. And so this year, because we've had the big makeover, the big makeover, he, he let me know that this is what I got for Christmas. <laughs> and great. so I made a video of my kitchen that I really <laughs> feel was my Christmas present. But you know what? At our age, what do you need? Yeah. You don't need a, yeah. anything. We don't need anything. And so it's neat to do for other people or to enjoy just time going out to eat with folks or, or something like that. But I, but I got tickled because... This is what I got for Christmas. It's my beautiful kitchen, and I love it. And I stand in the kitchen all the time looking out the window, and I say, thank you, Lord. I love my sink. I love my counter. I love my stove. If you've been without a kitchen for almost a year, it is amazing when those countertops go in. You're just like, oh, yay. That is wonderful. <laughs> yay, yay. I can stand there and spread that mayonnaise on that bread on that counter, and it's, just, it's awesome. So, yeah. Well, we played a game this year, which we, we do that typically every year. So when when my family and Holly's family, they get to get my mother's side of the family and, and uh, Holly's family get together at the same time. Uh -huh. So last year we did crazy hats. But I don't know if y'all have ever heard. We, we call it the Chinese Christmas. I don't know what it's called. You draw a number. Uh -huh. Everybody brings a gift. And right. this year we did As Seen on TV uh -huh. with a $25 limit. Oh, wow. And and you can steal gifts. And, yeah, oh, we it's, did that there's too. Always, it's, it's, there's always somebody gets their feelings hurt, which yeah. makes it yeah. so fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, so I can't yeah. even remember what I got. I think yeah. I got some. I ended hose. up with some really cool glasses over at Sue and Glenn's house. We did that for the Lions um, Christmas party, and it was a lot of fun. And I ended up with a really nice gift, and I liked that. And then there were some gifts that I was so happy I didn't choose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we've got birthdays, and today's birthday starts with a very, very special lady. On um, Tuesday when I came back in from our break, I played the music of Broken Ground. Broken Ground is some of the finest folks in the world, and today is the beautiful head honcho of, of Broken Ground, Dorothy Hightower's birthday. So happy birthday to Dorothy Hightower, happy birthday to Joan Evans, to Jamie R Ryder, happy birthday to Bill Tilly, happy birthday to Kimberly Davis, to Carrie Jordan, to Michael Cornett, to Stacia Hancock, and to Jessica Malky. Happy birthday to each and every one of you. I hope you have a great day. And for you folks who um, have been up in the Murphy, North Carolina area, if you've ever listened to the radio up there, Bill Yance has been a big part of the radio station up there. Bill's in the hospital. And um, his daughter and I became friends when I worked up in Fannin County, and, and she's just a precious, precious lady. And she said, please, please, please pray for her daddy. He went into the hospital with like his potassium, potassium at about zero. It was really, really tough. And they are building him back up now, and we want you to please pray for him. So pray for Bill Yance. And also, happy 26th anniversary. You know, when you make it 26 years in this old world, you are doing something pretty cool. To Paula and Richie Hancock from out in the uh, Hinton community, happy, happy anniversary to you. I have a friend up in Fannin County that, um, you know, we all face something. And um, she's faced a lot of stuff in the last year. Her husband's been dealing with cancer. They've dealt with some, you know, little financial issue here and there. A lot, a lot of things going on. But she was writing this, and, I, and I, it really touched me. She said, on December 30th, a great storm began in her life. And so I, I was looking at it this morning. It says she was worrying, fearful, and, and she was tossing and turning, wasn't sleeping, just having a really, really tough time. And her husband said, and this is so wise, don't, ju don't jump ship. Jesus is in your boat. That's really good. And I just thought, because he, he's a man who's battled cancer all year. 
But he gave her this advice. And, and I said, we all, um, next week is the date of Angela's death. And um, some friends invited me out to eat. And it's to celebrate their birthday, one of them's birthday, and then my birthday. And it hit me that we would be going on the day my daughter died. And I thought, no, I don't know about this. Seems like last year we might have gone on the 13th, which is my birthday. Mm -hmm. But this year they want to go on the 12th. And I've had to think, think, think about this. Well, you know, I can't stop living because my child did. Yes. So um, I talked to Shirley, and, and we're kind of, I'm, I'm still maybe up for it, but I don't know how I feel about being out enjoying my day. You know, is that a weird thing? Is that no, weird? No, it's, it's completely understandable. Because it was like the date hit me, and then I yeah. thought, I don't know about this. So I still don't know about this. I'm still, I'm still unsettled. But, but we have to move on, and we have to, you know. And, and I have so many friends now who've buried kids, and, and from, from newborns to three-year-olds to 20-year-olds to 40-year-olds. I have so many friends who've buried kids now, and we all have the same thing going on. When does it end? When does it get better? When is it fixable? When is it okay? So I don't know yet. I don't know yet if we'll be at the Woodbridge Inn on the 12th or we may, I may, I don't know. Or you we'll may see. change the day and go another yeah, day. Yeah, that's what, that's what Shirley and I were talking about. I, I, I just don't know. But you know, we can't jump ship and I can't walk away and I can't say I'm not going to live anymore because my child isn't living because um, as the song says, I've just started living, and um, yeah, I've just started living, and, and it's funny because last year, in the back of the ambulance, I remember begging God, do not take me, please, Lord, let me live this life, and I remember that this morning, and as I was coming up here, I was behind the Gilmer County ambulance, and it looked just like the ambulance I rode into Northside Hospital, and I just kept thinking, okay, God, I know that I'm being a, a whiny something right now and I understand that but I'm whining but I remember that ambulance ride and I remember when my eyes came back open in that hospital oh yeah and I was like because if you've ever been that close it really changes the way things look and that's why I keep wearing my celebrate shirts because I don't know if you've watched but I have cancer right here and we're waiting on a biopsy to come back. Okay, and it's a, it's, a se that. it's a simple cancer, and we're hoping that's all it is. Basal cell? Y no, it's squamous. Okay. okay. So it's a, it's a good cancer to have and catch early. Yes. And we're hoping that it's all gone. But, but I keep wearing my celebration clothes because I ought to be celebrating life. Mm -hmm. You know, I almost died in the ambulance. I've gone through so much. And I'm still here. And I'm still having a good time. And God's you know? not done with you yet. No, God is certainly not done with me yet. And, I, you know, I got one more airline to get before I leave here. But, but when you think about it, um, we are not guaranteed tomorrows. And over the Christmas holidays, two dear friends went to be with the Lord. One my age, one younger than me. And, and so, yeah, it really does make you look at, and, and I think the ambulance ride was, I don't know what it cost me that day, but it was worth a million dollars. Because once you've gone that far, and I can remember heading into that tunnel and being gone, mm. and then thinking, God, please let me come back. And I was begging, I was begging to come back. And when I came back, and I can remember when I opened my eyes in the bright lights of the hospital room, and they were over me, and they were prepping me, and I'm like, yes. You know, mm -hmm. it was just like this amazing feeling. So, yeah, celebrate life, and celebrate every moment of your life, because we don't know. Well, and, and it's, it's hard sometimes. Life, life can overwhelm you. Yes. And, and I, I get overwhelmed on a fairly regular basis, and... and and when I turn to Psalms and spend time reading, you know, it's like David probably was one of the most emotional people that you've ever met and went through some really horrible things. Yeah. He would just pour his heart out, but then say, nevertheless, I trust you, Lord. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and that's, the, that's the peace that we have in going through these things of knowing we may not understand why, we yeah. may not understand yeah. what for, no. No. but he's there with us, whether we, even when we don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's in the boat, so don't jump ship. Jesus is in your boat. So there you go. Now, we've got to take a break, and we've got to jump right into a commercial. Please remember our sponsors. Without them, they would, we would not be here. I'd be sitting in ball ground doing something else today. So, yay, thank you to our sponsors. We're going to take a break. We'll be back shortly. 
high-speed Wi-Fi. Not quite as important as running water in your home, but close. Ignite Internet from ETC powers your Wi-Fi network with consistent speeds to keep all your gadgets going strong. Streaming video players, laptops, tablets, even smartphones, so you're never stuck with those big cell data charges. And talk about value. Just pick your speed and keep the Wi-Fi flowing in your home at a great low price. Upgrade your Internet today. Call or visit etcnow.com to learn more. I'm Lauren Smith, the University of Georgia. Today we have John Davis, former Georgia Tech All-American, Frank Ross, captain of the Bulldogs 1980 National Championship team in a Subway showdown. Subway. How many Subways does that Singleton own? He just up with number 17. He started in my hometown of LJ. Yeah, but he graduated from University of Georgia. Uh, hey guys, who's hungry? It looks like Subway and Singleton Food Services Incorporated, the winner again. Subway. Fountain Roofing has been providing excellent service for 35 years. Let Lonnie assist you in choosing the roof perfect for your home and your budget. Commercial or residential, he can handle it all. Fountain Roofing continues to provide quality workmanship and will provide references upon request. At Fountain Roofing, we've got you covered. Call Lonnie at 706-692-6997. That's 706-692-6997. In today's changing world, some things should never change. Time-honored, compassionate services are what families have come to know with Roper Funeral Home. Our professional and courteous staff offers traditional services, cremations, as well as advanced funeral planning, which relieves the burden from those we love. Hello, I'm Kevin Roper. If you have any questions about the services we provide, we invite you to give us a call, stop by, or better yet, ask a family who has used our services. We've had Alpha Insurance since our first daughter. And when we had quadruplets, <laughs> we really needed Alpha. Now we need our own insurance with great rates, fast claim service, and a local agent we know. And we want to company our kids and grandkids can trust. <laughs> Call Alpha! For the best agents in the business, call Ed Stepp in Blue Ridge. Georgia Medical Treatment Center in Canton specializes in low-level pain management. We provide a holistic approach to treatment, managing knee, back, and joint pain along with migraines, allergies, and medical weight loss through holistic and alternative approaches rather than pharmaceutical treatments. By offering multiple specialties under one roof, including chiropractic care and neuropathy injection treatment, we create the continuity of care that assures positive patient outcomes. So take the first step to a life free of pain. Give us a call or go online today to georgiamtc.com. Hello everybody, my name is Roberto Pereira. I'm a cardiologist practicing at Piedmont Mountainside at Jasper, Georgia. I'd like to invite you to join me as I talk to some very interesting people about health. Sometimes physicians, sometimes nurses, sometimes both. And the name of the program is called Doctor Talk. It airs twice a week at ETC TV. Yeah, we're back. Okay, Paul, good news for the year, good news economically, good news, what's, what's going on? I mean, we know the real estate market is good, we know that stocks have done well. Mm -hmm. What else is going on? Well, you know, the good thing is, is we've got a chance, we've got some change coming. You know, we've talked about change in the past, but basically Republican, Democrat, they've pretty much done the same thing. Uh, we have crossed the $20 trillion threshold, from what I understand, uh, in national debt. So the biggest t concerning thing is is, is, is I think a lot of the market growth, a lot of the things that have caused the market to grow like it has, where you could just throw it in an index and you're going to make money no matter what, those forces are going to be changing. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to have, we have the potential for stronger economic growth. I mean, in the first 100 days, you know, Trump's laid out, um, I found it on NPR.org, what they're wanting to do, you know, repeal Obamacare. Right. That's got some challenges, but... <coughs> but you know, if we can get health care costs to start It has challenges, down. but if you walk in a doctor's office, every doctor, every nurse, every PA, yes. they are doing the happy dance because they're not getting paid. They're not getting yep. the, they're, it, it is a tough, tough time. It's putting doctors out of work. It sure is. You've got a, a million dollar education on your side and mm -hmm. you can't work because you can't get paid. Yeah. I know a lady down in Johns Creek, one of the most mm -hmm. affluent
affluent areas in Atlanta. And she actually sold her practice to keep from practicing because of Obamacare because she couldn't afford to practice. Right. That's right. crazy. She's a heart specialist. Yes. That's crazy. You know what her education costs? All kinds of stories <laughs> like that. But if we can get that repealed, keep some of the good things about it. You and know, there like are two good things to it. Yeah, yeah there are a couple of good things. conditions are yes, great. Yes, yes. Uh, I would love to have the opportunity to go back and be able to buy a health care policy where I don't have to pay for maternity if I'm not planning on getting Exactly. You know, it's for socialism is what it yeah, is. So hopefully yeah, that'll be yeah, changed. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, Trump's talked about withdrawing from the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Also, uh, Direct Secretary of Treasury ch uh, labeled China as a currency manipulator. Now, that's going to cause some stress, uh -huh. which will also cause some opportunity. I know China announced today that you know the the rhetoric has increased they they threaten to respond with a big stick yeah if um you know walk 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 quite softly i think it is and carry a big stick so there's a threat deeper passer <laughs> so you're going to see some upheaval you're going to see some turmoil yeah but the wild unknown you know unfortunately we live our lives scared of any change we've got to have some change to have this country grow again i, mean, I was reading an article yesterday talking about these entrepreneurs in the 40s, you know, 30s, 20s, 30s, 40s, and, and, and 40s more than anything, they were starting businesses without any regulation. Right. Now it's nearly impossible to start yes. a business. Yeah. And if you are running a business, you spend just as much time doing government paperwork yeah. or some, you know, uh, real estate's pusher. the same thing. We talked about that yesterday. I said 29 years in real estate. I started out where we did your contract on the hood of our car and we got everything in order and you handshake and everything was cool. Now, regulation to death. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Yes. It's tough. It's yes. tough. It's making it hard for everybody. It's created jobs for somebody to sit behind a desk and do something. But those aren't productive jobs. No. They're no. not producing goods. They're consuming things. So. Uh, you know, we'll see how that goes. Uh, uh, fifth, he wants to talk about lifting restrictions uh, on the production of $50 trillion worth of job producing American energy resources. That would be incredible uh, for our economy. Uh, six, uh, you know, there's been some Obama Clinton roadblocks that, uh, uh, that have not allowed vital infrastructure, mm -hmm. energy infrastructure. And then what I really like is cancel billions in payments to UN climate. Pro change programs and use the money to fix America's water and environmental infrastructure. Sure, yeah. And those are just the first seven things. Yeah. So, you know, I've, I've had issues where, where you pay taxes and that money is spent overseas. If it's spent in, a, in our country to protect us and to give us the opportunity to grow and have good roads and, and then, then I'm good for it. I don't mm -hmm. want money going over to somebody overseas. Mm -hmm. Really? Mm -hmm. So, uh, so we've got a lot of uh, a potential, we've got a lot of really potentially good things. Um, I am concerned a little bit that all of this euphoria uh, is kind of like, um, I had a friend several years ago that had been in a long marriage, made some really bad decisions and ended up divorced. And uh, the, the person involved in the divorce, he was just ecstatic over, said this is just gonna, this is just the best thing, it's what I've been looking for. The reality, the rea the reality <laughs> is, that. The newness was great, <laughs> yeah. but when it came down to working again, yeah. it was back to the work. Yeah. Yeah. So I think yeah. this euphoria is going to wear off a little bit. We've got some challenges, but I'm just excited that we've got somebody that's really focused on what's best for our country uh -huh. and not this global agenda. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, yeah, he says things that, that but I don't I'm, care I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. tired of polished. Yeah. You know, yeah. in the Bible yeah. they call those Pharisees. Yeah. I I tell you this, you'll love this. Somebody was talking about me and how I can't remember exactly how they did it, but like um, sometimes she she sounds like she's from the city, but she's country as grits. Well, everybody knows I grew up in the city, but I got here forty something years ago, so I adjusted to country living real quick. And it's funny because sometimes I know correct English, but sometimes I just let it go. And it's you know you know the difference. You know the difference. You know that he knows right from wrong. I know right from wrong. But sometimes you just let it fly, and <laughs> yeah. it is what it is. You know. And yes. I, I remember the day Roger Futch hired me. I said, "What you get with me is." what you get with me. Yeah. If I'm having a bad day, you're going to know it. If I'm having a good day, you're going to know it. And I don't do mornings. And he laughed. But, <laughs> that's great. But that's, I think that's the deal with him. Mm -hmm. You're going to get what you get, but you're getting such a great package with the you're going to get what you get. Well, you know? and the great thing is you've got trust there. Yeah. Okay. Now, I don't like plastic faces because you know, too many times you got somebody who's passive aggressive. They don't have the courage to tell you that they're mad at you about something, mm -hmm. but they stab you in the back the first moment mm -hmm. you have a mm -hmm. chance to turn mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. Other people, they don't they don't reveal themselves to you because they've got an agenda where they're trying to profit off of you. 
I like somebody who's going to look at you and say, you know what, if you do this, I'm going to smack you in the mouth. Right, you're an idiot. If you don't, yeah. we're in yeah. great shape. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you've got boundaries where you can operate within. So, so I don't, uh, uh, you know, it's refreshing. I will say this, if, if, my, if my late dead husband were here, he would have voted for Trump ten times. <laughs> He'd have found a way to vote for him ten times because um, he always said computers are the ruination of the world. He right. never trusted computers. And there's been so much talk about the computers, and, and, and the computers often generate a picture that isn't exactly what it is. Right. Well, you can see that on Facebook. Yes. You can go to Facebook and you can read somebody completely. You know exactly what kind of day they're having. Or you can say... Um, uh, yeah, right. Mm -hmm. You know, so so the computer and, and social media has has either been really good or really bad. It just depends on, on how is. you handle it. So Well, I'll tell you, a lot of the stuff I've done as a parent that's worked out okay has been pure by accident. But my daughter lost her phone for 60 days. So right before Christmas, I asked her, I said, I said, so has it been as bad as you thought that it would be? Because it was tough on us trying to find out where find she out. is and yeah. communicate, yeah. you know. I can say when the, they drive and when they have a phone, it does make your life easier. Oh, it makes your life a lot easier. It does. Yes. yes. Well, yes. and in addition to that, you know, the problem is, is a lot of the coaches now, they don't communicate with the parents. They right. communicate they with the kids. The kids so they won't or... put us on the text. So we don't know when practice changes. But anyway, she looked at me and she said, Daddy, she says, uh, I thought it was the worst thing in the world when it happened. She said, but I would have never had the discipline to take my phone and set it down. She said, but now I hear about all these these social media arguments that my mm -hmm, friends are having, mm -hmm. and it's so childish. But yeah. you get sucked in. She tells me. Yes, yes. She says, but I got sucked into that you do. world. You do. She said, so yeah. I'm kind of glad you took it away from me as long yeah. as you did. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. And but you raise some pretty tough, pretty smart kids. Well, they're, you know, they, they make mistakes, mm -hmm. and, and they've got a lot they know to know the learn. consequences. But, but I'll say they're tough. I, I, I don't try to shelter them from a lot mm -hmm, of things. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong, I try to protect them. Mm -hmm. It's like I was telling Katie, you know, you're not going to date till you're 16. The reason for that is... We don't is, care who you drag home, yeah. kid. You ain't dating these. Yeah, so the, the reason, but he's such a nice yeah. guy, Daddy. <laughs> yeah, the, the curse of being a dad is you remember, you still remember, you know, if you can forget what you were like when you were that age. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I said, you know, if, if you find yourself in a circumstance at a place where you're not comfortable, I want you to legally be able to get in the car and drive. Mm -hmm. I don't care if you take somebody else's car if it's a bad enough situation. Yeah. We'll, we'll deal with that. Yeah. It's not yeah. theft if you're yeah. in, a, in, in a bad situation. We'll get it back. <coughs> so just, just trying to, to teach them. But I, I you know, I try, to, I try to discipline them well, and I try to love them well, and I try to play with mm -hmm. them. And, mm -hmm. You know, they, they, last night we were sitting at the dinner table and they were making fun of how I am when we have bad days, when yeah. I have bad days. Yeah, yeah, I sound like a monster. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, uh, now, when the, when the new year started and everybody is happy and looking for, are people looking for change? Are they looking for the same thing? Are they comfortable with what they're doing? What do you think as far as investing, if somebody is looking right now to... What do, you, what, do you, what are you saying, this is what we're going to do this year? Well, what I would say to people is you want to set your expectations up correctly. Yes, we've got a lot of optimism, but let's say if, if the economy accelerates, wages are going to increase and interest rates are going to go up. A lot of the market move over the past couple of years has been through financial engineering, and, and we're at really historical high, highs on price to earnings ratios, price to cash flow. So the market's really priced to perfection. So as I tell people, you, you know, if, if you get caught up in this journey, it's going to be volatile. We're in a window of time right now. If we have any volatility, I think you can aggressively buy it and take advantage of it. Where before, I was saying you've got to just be cautious. So just be patient. I do believe that the investment process is going to be more rewarding, but it's going to be more challenging. For the past four years, the best approach was just throw your money into an index fund. But as the economy changes, you're going to have some upheaval. You're going to have some companies that are going to do poorly in that environment. And you're going to have companies that are going to do phenomenally well. So I, I, I do believe it's going to come back to a, to a scenario where it takes brains to make money in the investment process. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but I am optimistic. <coughs> I'm really optimistic about international right now. International in, indexes are very close to the same levels they were in 2010, 2011. The U.S. has benefited. We've, we, we've been kind of this plow horse economy where it's just slown, growly, uh, grown slowly. As we start to accelerate, it's, it's possible right now. International is starting to accelerate, so I think you're going to be rewarded for being international. 
the average person is not going to do that because mm -hmm. they're going to look mm -hmm. back for the past five years and go, wow, I'd have made 1% a year if I was an international mm -hmm. and I made 12% a year. I don't know if these are right numbers. I'm just, mm -hmm. just throwing numbers out in the S&P. They're going to buy high. But, mm -hmm. um, but I am optimistic. I think commodities are going to be a very uh, potentially good place to be, especially if inflation starts to accelerate. Hopefully inflation won't accelerate too strongly. And hopefully interest rates won't That's something I wanted to ask you about. Fast. I was thinking about this last night. Our first home purchase was um, $55,000. Mm -hmm. And um, payment was seven twenty six ninety a month. Okay, today kids are facing their first home purchase, $125,000. Mm -hmm. And their payments are nine to 1000 a month. Mm -hmm. And their wages have not kept up. No, for basically for it's 20 years. It's very tough. It's okay. very tough to get to get in what we walked into. It is well for those of you that are out there who are who are straight Republicans. Okay, wages didn't go up any more under Bush than they did under Obama or Clinton. So mm -hmm. Republican Democrats, as far as I'm concerned, you look at wages. Right. They've both benefited corporate America and not you. Mm -hmm. Okay. So mm -hmm. the big question is, is what's going to happen under the Trump? It's weird when you look at a sign and it says. Starting pay eight dollars an hour. That's the Dairy Queen in Jasper. That's yeah. a big deal. Yeah. Because everybody else was paying seven forty-five. Yes. That's a big deal, and that's sad because we're looking at eight dollars an hour, which means by the time they take your taxes out, you're still going home with about two hundred forty-five dollars a week. Yes. You can't make your nine hundred dollar a month house payment on that. No, not with one person working. And no. That's one of the things that have happened. You know, anyway, that we could have a whole show on that to to lay the foundation of where yeah. we come from. But yeah. the reality is, is we've got a chance for wage growth. And if we get wage growth, then that's going to support real estate. It's going to support. Um, it's going to support consumer spending. Uh, it's if wages grow fast enough, which is really good for you and I, and it's really good for the average individual. Then that's going to cause corporate profits to struggle a little bit. But it doesn't mean that they're going to be a terrible place to be because you know they should struggle, take a couple of steps back before they start accelerating forward. The difference in the 1980s was when you came out of the 70s, you had wages accelerating at a pretty dramatic pace. So the fact that interest rates were 17 or 18 percent, the national debt level was low, so people could absorb more debt, and their wages were going up. Uh -huh. We've not seen that specifically uh -huh. in the past 16 years, and one of the things that I've seen with a lot of professionals between the ages of 55 and 65 is their wages have been going down. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you can't legislate I'm living that higher. dream. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So you can't legislate wages higher. I mean, yeah, it'd be nice if, if minimum wage was $15 an hour. I mean, from, from what I But it I really see, wouldn't be because I'm not going to pay $4 for a 99-cent hamburger. Right. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to eat at home and have a peanut butter sandwich. So that takes out people who would go through that drive through window every day and, and buy, you know, I, crazy. I mean, I go through and I buy my 99-cent tea, and that's my big investment of the day. Right. Some days I buy a biscuit. Yeah, that's my big investment of the day. But people look at every dime they spend now. Well, be glad you don't live in Philadelphia. Oh, no. I saw a Twitter post yesterday. I don't know how, how I did not go uh, verify this, but apparently they have a new beverage tax that was instituted. And that this was probably alcohol because whatever the yeah. person purchased yeah. it was five dollars and ninety nine cents. Oh my gosh! They paid over three dollars and twenty five cents in a beverage tax. That's crazy. That's so, crazy. Anyway, and That's the crazy. worst part about that is, is that tax affects the, affects the people who who don't know. They're not educated enough to realize, you know, that that it, it may be bad for you, or maybe they are educated and they just choose not to. But you know, as we think about recovery in two thousand seventeen, you and I both know people in their seventies that lost it all. Yes. Um, is there a chance for recovery for them? There is, if they're wise and they're patient. The problem that I see, and one of the things that I've learned in the past 18 years, and even being on my own journey, where we've been through a period of time where the strategy that we implement has really struggled. I've been through periods of time where it has just fired on all cylinders, and I feel like a genius. And there's times in the past 24 months where I felt like, you know, I'm the biggest fool on the face of the earth same strategy that worked so well before but in the investing world you have you have certain environments that come and go so what happens with people is is they pile all in the market in 2007 or real estate because it's a good story and it feels good they might get rewarded in a little bit maybe they did it in 2005 and then you have the real estate crash and it wipes them out mm -hmm. Well, right now, I think you're going to see a lot of people that are just going to pile into the S&P 500 index. And I don't necessarily think that we're on the verge of this major collapse. But I'm not so sure that that's going to be the best strategy going forward for the next three or four years. It has been. As long as 
somebody does not start making desperate decisions, they can keep themselves patient because what happens when you get to that 70 years old is you say, I don't have any more time. Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. make, so you, you don't, you're not patient. You don't wait for a good setup. You don't what you start trying to force and push things. And when you do that, you're going to destroy yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so that's why I pray for my Don's health because I'm like, Don, you got to live old to take care of me because yeah. it's looking like I can't take care of me. It, it's like it, it is. It's very scary as it we is. approach that old age and we're like, OK, are we going to be able to handle all of this? Yes. Because the, the price of bread goes up, the price of milk goes up, the basics that we got to have. Yeah. And I mean, you, you look at it now, if you're a retiree, let's say you even saved well and you're 70 years old and you didn't lose a lot of finances in the real estate collapse or the stock market collapse or the tech bubble collapse that we've been through. Well, you know, if you save the million dollars and you put it in CDs in 2010, for example, I think that's, I think that's when about interest rates went to 1%, but this mm -hmm. is just discussion purposes. Mm -hmm. You're in $10,000 a year. Mm -hmm. If you've got a $100,000 CD, you're in $1,000 a year. In the year Which is squat. In the, in the year 2000 on 100,000. That yeah, is squat. It's, 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 yeah. Well, at the same time, health care costs have gone up. Yeah. yeah. Food costs. And this yeah. is something that your government has been manipulating. Okay? So, so these are forces that are outside your con control. So people are desperate and mm -hmm. understandably mm -hmm. so. Mm -hmm. And this is one of those environments where where I am a little concerned, don't get me wrong, you know that I'm more optimistic than I have been. I actually look forward to working in this industry for the next five years, mm -hmm. more so than I have in the past four. Mm -hmm. um, but, but we're still gonna have challenges. Sure we are. So what I worry about is people going, okay, Trump's elected, everything's gonna be great. They pile into the market as these professional gamblers have been piling in because yeah. people are gambling with somebody else's money. Yeah when it's your money and somebody looks at it like it's your money, they're a little more prudent when they care about you than they are if it's... If you inherited it and you blew it and lose it, it's one thing. If you worked your tail off all your life and you blew right. it and you lose it, then you're really... that's right. a, It's a totally different ballgame, too. We're going to take a break because we have to pay for this gig, and our sponsors are incredible. And please don't forget uh, Blue Ridge Dermatology. Thank you so much for everything they did for me to calm my fears. And we'll get my biopsy back in just a few days, and it's going to be nothing but great news. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. So, uh, what you doing? I'm, uh, I'm watching TV. TV? Yeah, well, it's really nice outside. With the binoculars. Yeah, yeah, so I watch TV off the mirror that goes through the window into the binoculars so I could be, like, outside while I watch. Watch a lot of TV? ETC's TV Everywhere lets you watch TV on your phone, tablet, or computer. Visit etcnow.com to find out more. Gilmer Parks and Recreation invites everyone out to River Park on Highway 5 and LJ. Join the 50-plusers every Wednesday at 9 a.m. for a Wednesday Walk in the Park at the Tennis Courts. Free bottled water will be available. Visit our website to find out about our recreational sports programs and rec leagues. You'll also find information on mountain biking and hiking trails, as well as tubing and rafting on the Cartagena River, all on GilmerRecreation.com. Gilmer County, a great place to play. Proverbs 426 states, ponder the path of your feet, then all your ways will be sure. Too often investors are looking for instant gratification or some secret formula for success. The prudent, however, have pondered the path of their money, invested with a vision, and based upon a plan that drives the selection of their investments. We believe the prudent approach is to have a strategy and patiently work towards your goals. Give us the opportunity to compete for your business, because at Keiko Wealth Management, the wisdom is in the planning. At Blue Ridge Dermatology, we believe your skin is vital to your health. That's why each of our providers gives personalized treatment recommendations. Let Dr. Mills do a thorough exam. He specializes in all skin conditions. Jamie Savageau is our nurse practitioner who specializes in skin disease. And our physician's assistant, Patrick Martin, is a certified injector for facial rejuvenation. Our certified laser technician, Donna Atosco, performs laser procedures with the latest gold standard equipment. Susan Newton is our medical esthetician. She specializes in chemical peels and skin tightening. Let one of the staff at Blue Ridge Dermatology help you look and feel your best. When Mike leaves town, it's a little scary. You never know who might be outside. But we feel safer inside knowing our home is being monitored by a local company. I can check our alarm from just about anywhere. So when we get home, I know it's safe. 
Get peace of mind for your family with a local company. Switch your current security monitoring to ETC Security and get six months monitoring free. Call ETC Security now or visit etcsecurity.com to learn more. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories. Writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. Mm-mm. We're back. Okay. Um, conservative me. Still watching every dime, watching every penny, worrying a little bit, but feeling hopeful. Yes. I think the average folks are feeling hopeful. Yes, they are. But I will tell you, I got my little Social Security thing, <laughs> and, you know, my, when you're talking about insurance, I was sitting over here and I wanted to just laugh. My Social Security is enough to pay my life insurance and my health insurance. It leaves me with zero. So I will be working until I'm 102. And... I hope there's employment for old people. But it's interesting to me that when Social Security was done, I didn't plan it correctly. I didn't do what I should have done as self-employed, as writing off all you can write off, as not making the profits you probably could have made. I put the screws to myself, really, because being self-employed and writing off your mileage and writing off your advertising and writing off brings your net worth down brings your tax bracket down, but then in the end, I don't have enough to live on. Right. That's very scary. So if people are planning, don't take my advice because I blew it. (laughs) You know, I just didn't do it right. And um, when you look at people, what's the most you can draw on Social Security? Ooh, I looked at that yesterday, but I can't remember what that number is. It's somewhere in the neighborhood of $2,800 to Mm $2,900. Okay. I could live on that easily. Actually, that'd be more than I made. So, yeah, I could live on that. But but I didn't plan correctly. So if you're talking to younger people, do you share with them that you might want to depend on Social Security? I still feel good about Social Security. I don't think they're going to completely destroy it now. I think we have some hope. Mm-hmm. But um, Social Security is important to me. And the fact that I blew it, there ain't nothing I can do to change it. Yeah, that's one of those things, unfortunately, in life. and. And, of course, had you not experienced what you went through in real estate, things would be completely different. But that's the, hard, Wouldn't need it, that's the hardest part about life. Yeah. When you think you got it figured out, something's going to happen. Yeah. It's, yeah. Just, it's just the way it is. I don't know anybody who's not faced some type of challenges throughout their life, whether they've accumulated massive amounts or little or nothing because mm-hmm. they got wiped out. But, uh, no, when we get into our planning for anybody that's under the age of 40, and I'll tell you what's really, really scary is I don't know if it's the demographics of our area, but I've got advisor friends in Bindings, Buckhead, um, you know, Carrollton, Georgia. Nobody under the age of 40 plans. Yes, yes. <laughs> and in, in my situation, I want to plan so that if Social Security is there, it's a bonus. Mm-hmm. If it's not, mm-hmm. then mm-hmm. Okay. That's where I failed, yeah. But yeah, yeah, Social Security. I didn't expect it to be needed, I guess right. is the, yeah. Right. So I tell people not to plan for Social Security, mm-hmm. if mm-hmm. there's any way, if I meet with somebody who has enough time to, and and time, and they take the discipline to plan without it, then we set the plan up in mm-hmm. place because it mm-hmm. just gives you more room for error. Right, right. For somebody who has no way of reaching that mathematically, then I'm not going to tell them that. Mm-hmm. But, but we do count on Social Security, and Social Security is a core component to a lot of people being able to retire. Yeah. And I believe that's you, you know. Um, Entitlement, as they call it, if you pay into that Social Security, you should be compensated for mm-hmm. that. Absolutely. Now, if Trump doesn't do something with Social Security around 2030, there's going to be a big question as to whether the government prints money to make sure that everybody gets their Social Security, or we don't because the government's not managed it prudently, mm-hmm. but the government owns a printing press. Mm-hmm. So I think, I, I guess they feel like they can get away with anything until they can't. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, so yeah, the, you know, we were talking at the gym this morning. Uh, some of the guys are older and they come in to walk around and one of them was talking about the fact that he got his social security increase. You know, he got his cost of living adjustment. Oh, I did this too. Three dollars or something ridiculous. He was so excited until his health care his Medicare mm-hmm. went up yep. and he said, I netted three dollars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
I, uh, $3, I think, is what he said he netted. He said, so they just teased me was all they did. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And one of the other guys looked at him and says, well, it's better than nothing. And you can imagine, I, I start because being a political atheist, I get to pick on both sides. Yeah. So yeah. I, I was over there making fun of the type person who's going to say that, the type person who's going to say the other, and we laughed so hard this morning. Uh, yeah. But, you know, it's a shame that, that the frustrating thing that I have with Social Security is, the government changes the calc has the ability to change the calculations. I don't see, and a lot of professionals that I talk to don't see, the cost of living increases for Social Security keeping up with mm -hmm. the actual cost no, of living. No, no, and and that's not fair. It's not, it's not fair because a lot of people lost their savings, lost their investments, lost whatever. You know, put a kid through college and used their money to do that and then didn't expect to, to for a loaf of bread to be three dollars right. so it's it's very different it's very tough and but we're still saying 2017 is going to be a very good year yes it's i'm excited, be a very I'm excited. Good year. we have the potential for a lot of amazing things to happen um and a lot of amazing opportunities so hopefully businesses can get back to building you know, the fact that Ford, some of these other companies have decided to keep their, their plants here. Yes. You know, 700 jobs here, 1,000 jobs there. If we continue this for somebody who cares, yeah. that's the most amazing thing. Yeah. I mean, there's been immediate uh, immediate changes to, sure. to what's been business as usual in the United States. That I'm excited about. I think that's one of the things that's made Ball Ground the great place it is to live. We have three factories there yes. that employ and pay well, pay very, very well. And when you're looking at three factories employing over 800 people between the three, that's a lot of money coming into your little community. That's and so a when lot you wonder when you're riding around everywhere looking for a house to buy in Ball Ground, there ain't much to choose from. Well, here's the thing I've got clients that I work with with each of those manufacturing uh, plants that are in their 50s. They're accumulating money, they're saving money, they have money to sure. invest. They've got good jobs. So guys, and, and uh, all, all, all of you politicians ahead, right now is a good time to start man, uh, recruiting manufacturing and try sure to bring it, it into our area to further diversify our economy. Yeah. Because what if rates go to 15% real quick? Real estate's going to struggle a little bit, sure still going to be there, yeah. but it's still going to struggle. You can't rely upon one thing. So take this opportunity under administration who is trying to bring manufacturing jobs back and get something here for the other mm -hmm. surrounding communities yeah. because Ball Ground's benefiting dramatically Man. strictly because there's other forces, yeah, yeah. but that's a major force but that's it, benefiting. When you're talking three plants that are employing so many people, minutes to Ball Ground, I mean, yes. it is amazing. It is absolutely amazing. And when you look at the growth coming in right in downtown Ball Ground, it is, it is just the coolest thing ever. Yes. And it's like you drive down the road and you're just like grinning and you're just so happy and it's just opportunity. And, and the and businesses are doing good. Sure. The, you, you know, the, and yeah, there's wear and tear on the infrastructure. But it's worth it. Yeah. It's worth it. That's what we need. That's, That's what, what we, we need. need. That's what we need. Now, give folks your phone number if they want to come and sit down and talk. And, and if they're 40, it's certainly time to talk to you. And if they're 60 and they blew it, maybe it's time to talk again. doesn't matter. It's time. You know, it's never too late to start a plan. It's never too late to seek wise advice. I, I hope that our advice is wise uh, over time. I know in the short run, sometimes it may not be that way. But, uh, you know, seek that advice and develop a plan and start working it and be patient. We're in the instant gratification society and, and instant gratification is just going to be harder to come by. Sure so it is. work that plan, uh, be patient, but if you don't take those steps, if you, if you quit fighting, if you quit trying, if you give up, then you're not going to get anywhere. Don't jump ship. Jesus is in the boat. He's in the boat with you. <laughs> There you you may not feel him, <laughs> and there may be a purpose, but there's always a purpose for what you go through. I read something good. We got to get out of here. What's your phone number? It's 706 253 7285. What'd you read? You got 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah, I looked up there and saw that three now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'll have to share it with us next month. Thank you for being here, Paul. And what a Thank joy. You, what, a, what a great way to start my year. I'm going to leave you now where rivers, mountains, and good friends meet, and snow is on the way. We're going to have two to five inches, according to the weatherman. We'll see what really happens. Uh, get your TP, get your bread, get your milk, be in, be safe, stay off icy roads. If we get ice, don't you dare leave your house. I'll see you again on Monday morning. Brother coming out the door. Looks a lot like you
what you put me 